with that knockout win for Belanga this weekend, did he put himself in line? Is he the front runner for Canelo Alvarez? I believe he is. Find out why. You heard it from Tim Bradley. Saturday night, Edgar Berlanga got that knockout over Padre McCrory. Six-round knockout. And guess what? Like Tim said, it looks like he's going to be next in line or soon to fight Canelo Alvarez. But we're talking about the big fight on Big Fight Recap. Chris, Ollie, Chris Alger, Pauli Malnagy, you heard what Tim had to say. What do you guys say, Chris? I mean, I, I have to agree. It, it's just the writing is on the wall. Uh, this fight was, I think it was billed that way. If, if if Edgar went out there and looked impressive and scored a knockout, then he would very be very much in the running for, for, for the Canelo Alvarez sweepstakes. We've been hearing some news about things going on with PBC and Canelo. Nothing is truly confirmed yet, but it certainly seems that all signs are pointing to a, a Canelo and Berlanga matchup. Um, I wouldn't be surprised, but at this point, really... Anything that Canelo does isn't going to be surprising to me because there's been so many bait and switches going on in the past few months. Uh, so many, so many cryptic messages, messages about announcing messages. Um, it's uh, yeah. At this point, uh, my ability to be surprised or to be angered by anything uh, that Canelo does is, is it's kind of it's kind of already left. <laughs> it's, it's already left my body. But uh, very interesting to see what what the final say is going to be. The fight's only two months away. Like, we're right around the corner. And every time Canelo fights, it's a big fight. Um, and if it is going to be, you know, Berlanga, then, you know, it's a very quick turnaround. He just fought this past Saturday night. Granted, it was only a six-rounder in a fight that he didn't take much damage. Still, going from training camp to training camp like that can be tough. But uh, curious to see what, what the next steps are going to be and when the, the official announcement of Canelo's next opponent will be. But in the meantime... Uh, Berlanga had a good win, a much needed win. He he snapped the the, the drought of the of the non KOs, and he beat a guy who was undefeated. And you know that's that 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 puts him right back in the mix. And boxing is what have you done for me lately? And in terms of Edgar Berlanga, he scored a knockout. So that's that's what people are going to remember first and foremost. All right, bro. So what is Canelo doing with us? What, what was that announcement he, he gave us in the last few weeks about? Oh, <laughs> uh, he's going to announce that he's he's fighting an American fighter. What, so it, the there announcement actually, to make an announcement. Was, was there actually a plan? Was it, was that plan now? Is the plan that we're hearing is uh, undone uh, because you know PBC may have allegedly dropped the bag here by not being able to. Uh, guarantee Canelo's minimums under the under the the deal and the contracts uh you know there's a lot to think about here and and and, and if that's the case did Canelo know about this or was Canelo making an announcement that that's now that now becomes null and void but even he himself knew that 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 he was going to fight a PBC fighter before which now makes that announcement null and void now and now we're kind of starting back from scratch and that that announcement a week or two ago was completely useless. Was that the case? I, I, I don't even know what, what to think anymore. The, the, again, like the champ is saying, the bait and switch and all this other stuff. Is the bait and switch planned or is this actually happening? I'll tell you what, what I can tell you from my own career. A fight will be announced of, of mine, but I already knew that fight was happening like at yes. least a month before. Yes. You know, I was yes. already training for that fight. Yep. So it wasn't like, oh, the fight was made with only this much time. And I can remember media outlets saying, oh, there's only this much time before this fight. How much time do these guys have to train for the fight? Yet me and my opponent already knew we were fighting a month before, which is not to be announced. So if that's the case here, did Canelo know of his opponent? Was he just throwing stuff out there just for clicks? Why do you care about clicks when you're fighting for 35 million a fight at this point, man? You know what I mean? Like, you're jerking us around at this point. Or did he know about the, this, this situation uh, uh, of his opponent and now it has become undone and now even he's left scrambling trying to negotiate a new fight? We don't know. You know why we don't know? Because this guy made an announcement about an announcement. That's all we don't know. We don't know if he was telling the truth, if he was in on this, if he knew about it all along. We don't know anything now. But you guys are to blame. You guys are to blame because you like to be jerked around. So we just tell you, you don't like to hear it, that you get jerked around. You don't like to hear it, it's too bad. You, you guys are to blame here. Now, as far as going in this direction, you're gonna, if, you, if you're going to go through the zone, the, the zone direction, this explains why Eddie Hearn was given such a verbal job to Canelo the other night. This explains why this was happening. Because I couldn't understand for the life of me why, what Eddie Hearn gets out of complimenting Canelo to the point where he's lying. He's like, this guy will fight anybody. What, what are you lying about, bro? It's clear he's not going to fight anybody. All right. All right. Well, Paulie, let's talk about something we do know. 
We know Berlanga I'm done. won. I'm and done. guess what? I'm and done. guess what? Get, get, get me, get, get, not, take that off. I'm done. No, no, I, I'm done talking about yet. it. I'm sick of it. You can't go yet. You can't go yet because we got <sighs> Mark Ferre. Mark Ferre is Edgar Berlanga's trainer. We're going to talk about Edgar Berlanga right now. Forget Canelo for at least five minutes. We're going to talk to Mark Ferre, who is the trainer, esteemed trainer of Edgar Berlanga. Mark, congratulations. It was a huge win. So let's not talk Canelo right now. Let's talk your fighter and, and how he did last Saturday night. What did you see? Were you happy? Dude, first you got me following up after that. <laughs> Holy. You thought I wasn't Never awake, spoke. right? Holy, you woke everybody up, man, even in Brooklyn, man. Jesus. <laughs> I love it. I love it. Um, yeah, um, Saturday night was uh, was a pretty good night. Uh, listen, in boxing, you're gonna have naysayers, and you're gonna have the pros and cons. You're gonna. It's just. It's just how life is. Um, could Edgar have done better? Yeah. Um, I'm. I'm a guy. I'm. I'm. I'm not like every other trainer in boxing. I think Edgar has a lot to develop. He still has a lot to develop. Um. I just want to make this analogy real quick, right? In case we're gonna go into the Canelo and all this other stuff, right? But. In every sport, it's all about entertainment. I'm a big Knicks fan. Mm -hmm. And when the Knicks was winning with Patrick Hewen, they were the guys on Christmas and everything. When he left, we stunk up the place. Mm -hmm. But they still wanted us on Christmas Day. Um, it's all about um, notoriety. Um, notoriety, um, notoriety. What people want to see. Uh, it's what Tim mentioned, social media, and all this other stuff. Jake Paul is is proven that that you don't have to have a belt, you don't have to have a name to make millions and millions of dollars. You just have to know what you're doing and market yourself correctly. So for Edgar, I told Edgar before the fight, I had no idea this was happening. And 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 what they do is they notify me after it's done. I'm not in on any 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 talks or private talks. Um that's not my lane. That's not what I do. I'm paid to train them and that's it. But what I did tell him was that you had the feeling up to this. And I told him Friday night, we were in my uh, my room. I said, Edgar, um, this might sound crazy, but this is a fact. I said, Edgar, um, you win impressively, man. Um, you're going to be a superstar. I want you to listen to this. It had nothing to do with Patrick McCory, right? It had to do with just his social status, right? It's, it's, it's If he wins a knockout people would just start to talk, whether it's good or bad, right? So it turns out that he did win. And what I mean a superstar, right? Today, you know, we're talking about financial, like what ranks you up there as a superstar? Um, to me, it's the finances right now. It's what you pay for. I see a lot of my free agents that I, I'm going back to other sports. Let's just, let's be honest. Let's forget about boxing. Um, I've seen the Yankees sign tons of guys that ain't worth that money. Um, I seen the Knicks do it. It's in every sport. I seen the Rangers get Gretzky when he was old, you know. Um, um, so um, it's just it, it just goes on and on. So when I made that statement, I, I'm in terms of he was going to be in line for a Canelo fight, but he had to look impressive. And all the boxing experts will say he's not that guy that Canelo should fight, right? So I'm going to be honest, right? You got you got monsters in that division. Mm -hmm. you, got, you got Benavides. You got you got one guy that was there that 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 I love his style and people are staying away from him, which is um Morel. Um you have uh even Jaime Munguia looked great against mm -hmm. Ryder. Um you can just go on and on, you know. Um Charlo, those guys had their run. I don't think that after he looked in that last fight, I'm not I wasn't too big and sold on on the big Charlo in that last fight. But you have other guys, man. You got Caleb. You know, you got you got monsters, and it just so happened that the dominoes might might fall where it falls Edgar's way, and that's just how it is. You know, there's no one that has an answer to that. So, Mark, do do you think he's ready? Do you think he's ready for a Canelo fight? I, I'm going to be honest honestly? with you. I'm, I'm going to ask you this. I don't think anybody's ready for Canelo. Okay. Let 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 let's let's just call a spade a spade. We heard a lot from Charlo, right? Yep. Do this, I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna do this, I'm gonna do that. He got in the ring, it all became real. Yeah. There was nothing done. Nobody complained about that. I tell you right now, you're gonna get a better fight with him, Edgar. It's gonna be a shootout. It wasn't a shootout with with, with, with Charlo. 
that was more like there was really nothing happening. Charlo was playing hide and seek. Huh? Charlo yeah. was Charlo was playing hide and seek. Yeah, so but 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 everybody, you know, he was undisputed, he was this, he was that. Listen, I'm not here to take anything away from any fighter. From any fighter. Them guys are gladiators, man. I don't care who but, you are. Even but, Patrick but Mark, McCoy. But Mark, here's the thing. Do you think yeah. Edgar's in the uh uh sort of an enviable situation where he's young? So the younger athlete will usually, younger fighter will usually be a bit more hungry to get, it, to attain a result, as opposed to the guys like Charlos of the world who have made a lot Canelo of money already. How was Canelo when he Mayweather? Yeah, well. 20, 23? He was 23, yeah. Yeah, exactly. How many fights he had in Mexico? Yeah. Tons. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But the, oh. the, the, that's that's the thing, right? <laughs> so you, you, you take your shot. That's what I was going to say next. You take your shot. Are you in the enviable position where you're young and there's... There's some. There's more to learn. Obviously, I think Bel Edgar Belanga is, after starting like 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 he was uh, uh, on rockets, uh, uh, rocket fuel early in his career, sort of took a couple of steps back. But in the last couple of fights, has shown the steps towards yes. riding the ship. Totally, I, I, I he, totally agree. Is he back? I totally agree. Now, I totally agree. now here's where here's where my I don't want to get an argument. My viewpoint is and and. and and look, I'm the guy who wanted to see Canelo Benavides more than anything. I think Benavides is the right. most deserving guy. But here's the thing from, from the Thank reality. You. From the reality, even if Edgar Berlanga is, is not, has not righted the ship completely, he's, he's been on his way the last two fights as far as right. looking better and knowing how to navigate a 12-round fight. Even if he's not quite ready, nobody's going to turn down the Canelo fight if that comes around. Right. Yep. You know what I mean? So right. you accept it and you take and you, and you try to keep building off the last two wins, which have been wins that where you've shown improvements off of the, the, the deficiencies that you had shown prior to that. So you, you right. keep going in that direction that and, being you don't, said, and you don't turn it down because those opportunities come around once in a career at times, you know? That, that being said, I don't think there's one fighter that would turn that down. No. No. Including no. you, Paulie. No. 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 You know why? Because at the end of the day, you're a prize fighter. Mm -hmm. You fight for a prize. Mm -hmm. Every time you go out there, your life is on the line. Anything that comes on that table, that's a lot. Guess what? You're going to take it. There are guys that aren't, world, that aren't world champions that make more money than guys that are champions. Oh, yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But listen, so, also, you, uh, fighters, oh. uh, fighters are warriors, too. You want to fight the best guys around. And having the, the opportunity to fight someone like Canelo, who's going to go down as a legend, you're going to have that name on your, on, your, on your roster regardless. So, yeah, you're absolutely right. Reg even beyond the money, you're not going to turn down an opportunity to but, fight but a potential all-time there, great. There's a, there's a, there's a catch-22 to that, too, because then there's the guy who's at the mountaintop who's making that kind of money. Are and, there any better if, fights if, than that? If, and, yeah, that's what I was going to say. And, and, if, yeah, you but, and if you give yeah, that guy the chance, he's always going to want to hang around at the top and, and look to make but, Nick pick his choices. And, but, and that's but, what he doesn't want, but he doesn't want to fight Benavides, no. right? So, so no, let's, clear. Let's, let's, clear. let's... That's clear, so, so now. Let's just put the, let's put it on the table. I am not here with pom-poms. That's, that's not my style. That's not who I am. Um, I'm not here for that. But he doesn't want to fight Benavides. Yeah. So... It shouldn't be Edgar's fault that he chooses Edgar. Mm -hmm. Yeah, not at all. Yeah. Edgar just threw his hat in the ring like well, everybody else. Well, I think it's more oh, it's so perfect. than that at this point. It's even if, at this point, Mark, I'll be honest with you. Even if, if, from what we're allegedly hearing about PBC sort of, quote unquote, dropping this bag, even if the Benavides fight was going to be made, now it wouldn't be able to be made anyway, regardless. Because it, it, See, it, I don't uh, believe it, that, Paulie. I, I don't believe that. You it, know why? Because, because, because let's not say that. All of a sudden, Edgar's hat's in the ring, and the fight's not going to be made. He had plenty of time to make that fight. Of course. No, of course. Years. He had plenty of time. Yeah. Of course, years. Of course. It's been years. He had plenty of time. But that, that, yeah, what but I'm saying is now. Towards the back end of his career, man. Canelo is towards the back end of his career. I keep telling yeah. people that. And he wants yeah. to set himself up nicely. This is the but, perfect but, but, amount but, but of Tim, risk for Canelo. But, but Tim, the he's perfect a, amount of risk is to fight Berlanga. One. Two. He's Puerto Rican. He has the Puerto Rican blood in him. So you got Puerto Rico versus Mexico. All the narratives are there. You know, you have this kid, this guy that can punch. Berlanga can punch. You know, so you have I mean, that. Uh, Berlanga, Berlanga is a knock him out. Is the, the stage is set here. Obviously, he's gonna. I think he's he's gonna be a a, a substantial underdog. He, again, he's he's coming up. He's he's gotten better. But I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what. Is, what kind of stage is set here? He becomes 
Trinidad and Coyle West if, he, if he's able to beat Canelo. I mean, that you become the Puerto yeah. Rican star of this generation because this yeah. generation has no Puerto Rican star of that level. We've always had a major Puerto Rican star of that level. And we don't really have one in this generation. There's sort of a void. There are Puerto Rican fighters, top Puerto Rican fighters, and among them, uh, Edgar Belanga is one of them. But there, that void, that, that vacuum right there it can be filled. And yeah, it's a tall task. If this fight is made, it's a tall task. But listen, I tell you what, if, it, it, if Canelo was ever at a more beatable time, if listen, there was ever a time when Canelo was beatable, it's now. I'm not going to make an opinion here. I'm going to make a statement, a fact. Mm -hmm. Benavides came out and said, He's very mute on me. He didn't, he didn't mention me. He doesn't want to fight me. Mm -hmm. He thinks Belang is an easy fight, mm -hmm. an easy fight for him. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he went on to say and finished that statement, and I'm pretty sure you guys seen it. So he goes, you, you, you're going to underestimate Edgar, and you're going to run into a hurricane. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And you know what? I'll take that, Paulie. I need you to keep talking like that. Mm -hmm. You know why? Because when you underestimate someone, right, you get your ass kicked. Mm -hmm. And I don't care who you are. If you don't train well and you think it's an easy fight, do, do you know that I told Edgar, I said, this guy, Patrick McCory, I said, dude, you better treat him. You better treat this guy like, like he's he's the guy. Every fight you go, he's the guy. Yeah, I, I want you to lose sleep. I want you to think he's going to knock you out. You know why? Because the minute you stop, that's when they hand you your ass in that ring. Yeah. So, right. so, so it's good that... And, and listen, I'm not a social media guy. I don't, I don't have social. I don't have Instagram. I don't have Facebook. I don't even care about that. But I tell you something, the comments are great. I tell you, they're good, whether they're negative or positive. And you know what? And if, and if, and if, and if Canelo feels like they feel, he's going to be in for a very good fight. Mark. Well, um, I got another statement. Before we move on, hang on one second. I got another statement. February 28th, Wednesday night fights on Pro Box TV. Mark knows all about Wednesday night fights, he's there almost every single card, if not every single card. February 28th, we got some great fights, good fighters and great fights. But let's keep moving on, Tim. I know you've got some questions for Mark on Edgar's performance, on Edgar's future. Moving on. Look, what 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 don't we see? Uh, I mean, Mark, I, I, I see some of the things, some of the fundamentals that he's not using inside the ring, uh, like his jab in particular. He, he It was... Not in boy. It wasn't, it wasn't even part of the game plan, man. Um, talk to me and let me know what it is that we don't see as boxing fans and boxing analysts that you see on a day-to-day -day basis inside that gym with Berlanga. I'm smiling, right? Because you can take a horse to drink water, but you can't force him. Hmm. Right. He's going to have to make that adjustment. And now, if it's true with, with the Canelo, he's going to have to make it even faster. Um, did we train? Yeah, we trained. We we trained with our lead hand. Um, we did just sparring with lead hands, you know, repetition. He had over 120 rounds of sparring. Um, his sparring partners were phenomenal. Najee Lopez, Darrell Valsain, yeah. we had Patrick Corder, and anyone who knows the young kid in, in Najee Lopez, Darrell Valsain, those guys are pretty special. Um, and he did very well, and they pushed Edgar. Um, I'm a big believer, especially here at ProBox. Um, I represent Gary Jonas. I, I, I'm the head trainer here at ProBox, but I also train Edgar Belanga, which Gary started Edgar in his first 13 fights. And we always preach to Edgar, right? One is the mind, two is the feet, and three is your lead hand. And then naturally, your ability to take over. So I believe in the lead hand, whether it's a lead hook, whether it's a feint with the lead hand, whether it's a jab. So I don't... I don't even have the answer for you. I'm not going to sit here and make excuses for him. I, I I just can't do that. But did we put the work in? Yes. Did he show it? No. Not as much as we wanted him to show it. But he used it. But we need to use it more. But how do you how do you develop? Because that it sounds like to it's me all, like it's all that, mental. Like it's here. It's, it's here. in between the ears, right? So, but it's how here. do you develop that coach inside the gym? Like, how do you develop his mentors to be out there, go out there and actually do what you're asking him to do? Because I, I, obviously he's going to be facing Canelo. If he does face Canelo, I mean, he got he to gotta listen. He got to be able to I'm, I'm gonna, jab gonna, and do certain things in there. I want to tell you this. Um, we can talk about how tough we are, but when we see the Grand Reaper, everybody just, you know, their pampers get full of shit. Right? So, <laughs> so, so, so. He's gonna have to use it, yeah. Because because if he doesn't, problems. Big mm. problems. 
Big problem. So you can use it in the gym and we can do a hundred rounds of the jab? Dude, I can't go in there and put my hand in there and, and, and throw the jab. So when you talk about mental, Tim, Tim, is either that or nothing. No, none. Mark, to your, to your point, uh, you know, from what I saw watching the, the McCrory fight, McCrory just wasn't the guy. He didn't force Edgar to show the things that you guys have been doing in the gym from what you're saying. And we're talking a lot about timing, right? You know, does, does, do, you, do you think can, that Edgar needs more work before this fight? Sure, but guess what? You don't really have an opportunity for that if this is to go the way that it seems like it is. Um, but you got a guy like Canelo, and if the work is done in the gym and you're forced to execute, even though you've never been there, a guy like Canelo and you stepping up can, can push you to that next limit. I know that's how my career went. I, was, I had never been at the level until I was at the level, until I had to be at the level. And that's when the greatness rises to the top. So if you're doing it in the gym and, he, and you're believe, if he's believing in the work and you got a guy at that level who's in front of you pushing you, that's when magic happens, man. I just don't think McCrory was the guy. I don't think Edgar needed to do anything. Listen, the first round, Edgar maybe threw half a dozen punches, if that. And McCrory, who I thought was a confident guy who comes forward as a big right hand, did nothing with it. Yeah. He just was not the guy. He did not show up to push Edgar, yeah, to make him reach that next there level. There wasn't enough mean streak in McCoy. I found, I found, you know, him, to you know be, I found him to be complaining more than anything believe, else. Well, he, he, was, he, wasn't, he wasn't there to take control. Go ahead, he fired that down. I agree with Tim. The jab, the lead hand wasn't used enough. I agree with you, Chris, also that styles make fights. Um, Patrick McCoy in the first round, my plan was not to go rushing at Patrick McCoy which is what everyone expects. Oh, we need a knockout from Edgar Belanga. I've never trained him like that. I've never taught him that. Just come out calm, work your way, try to find your distance, use your feints, be easy. One thing I knew about Edgar is that even if I'm down in the first two rounds with this type of fighter, I, I knew we had a chance to put some major damage in the middle of the fight mm -hmm. because everyone becomes themselves in the second half of the fight. Mm -hmm. All that, all that energy. Everybody can fight for three rounds. First round and mm -hmm. this and that. So when Patrick knew and he seen that Edgar wasn't there, his corner says he, we studied him long enough to see his patterns. There was no similarity in what we studied and what we seen in there. Yeah. So we were expecting him to come at us. We were expecting him to stay, you know, to lean in, this and that. So Edgar did what he had to do. Could he have done better? Yes. Yes, like, 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 let's just stop acting like this guy. Belanga's like a Canelo, you know, he's a Mayweather. This is a young kid that has 16 first round knockouts, only 16 rounds. He mm -hmm. averaged more rounds in the gym than he did in his first 16 fights. So, so with me, it's development. If I can get his lead hand going and his feet and a little bit of IQ, then his power will take over. But if he happens to fight Canelo, I guarantee everybody it is going to be action. It's going to be action. Like, you know, um, um, how can you prepare for Canelo? Listen, man, um, that's not even. But I, 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 I think guys. the preparation for Canelo is the psychology more so than yeah. the physical. Yeah. Right? Because the yep. psychology of that the, was big my light, point. Yeah. the big lights. Correct. Yes. Well, Mark, I, I have a question for you because you, you are a straight shooter. Um, we're taping this show at the end of February. So. The Canelo fight, the potential Canelo fight, they're talking May 4th, so that's two months. Edgar was cut in the fight. Um, just talk about that. It, would he be okay? Would he be cleared yeah, yeah, to, to train and fight for, for May? Yeah, he got uh, one, they gave him one stitch. Okay. So, so he has one stitch and he's fine. Um, that was on, on, a, on a headbutt. But um, he, he, he's pretty, he didn't take much punishment. Um, if not at all, um, he did a lot of good things. You know, he didn't get hit with right hands. Um, he landed some good shots. He landed thudding shots. I think that um, with Canelo, it's going to be a little bit different, a lot different, not a little bit, a lot different. And um, I'm a guy that I don't believe in that he shouldn't be there. And it's like, look, Simon, I mean, we, we we can go all down the lane in history of boxing. You know, who thought Buster Douglas was going to fight Tyson? That was supposed to be a walk in the park. You know, we can put a lot of different things on this. But um, does does Edgar have a chance? I think anyone put gloves on, you know, has a chance. And if we get that fight, we, we're gonna we're gonna work extremely hard, man. We're gonna work extremely hard, like everybody else did against Canelo. So you know, we're gonna try to bring as much as we can. And well, you're right. Maybe, well, maybe this is what what 
Belenga actually needed. You know, confidence booster. It's been a while since he got a knockout. You know, um, and that probably helped, definitely helped his psyche moving forward. And if he does get that Canelo fight, I think we could see a different, a different Berlanga because his confidence is now up, and now he believes in his power and he believes in his skills. So you know, there's a possibility as well, Coach. And and if he doesn't, we'll just continue to develop. Aga needs to develop, man. You know, and and if he does, then. We got to get ready quick. And coach, when you say develop, what are the areas that you see he's weak at? I mean, I, I I see certain areas, but what do you what do you see, coach? I like to see the lead hand a lot more. Okay. I, I like to see him build off of that. I I I think that's the that's what starts the engine, right? Like you're okay. constantly fainting using that lead hand. Um, I like for him to shorten up some of his shots. Okay. Um, I want a little bit more combinations as opposed to just looping and looking for one big shot so to me if he gets his lead hand going his jab uh, his feet are good you know he can use his feet um and if he uses his lead hand that can use that can be used offensively and also defensively to help him you know with them range but the lead hand and his feet his feet to get him in trouble get him out of trouble but the lead hand is where it counts and he can work off of that egg is pretty slick man for a guy his size he, he has some skill and who knows man that you know we might see that if he gets that fight, you know. I talk to a lot of guys, coach. I talk to a lot of guys that are, that are close friends with with Edgar, and they say, "My gosh, you should see him in the gym. You should see how you know uh, skillful he is inside the gym." You know, um, are we not seeing those skills? You know, when he steps into that ring, man, on fight night. I mean, you know, because I again, these guys, they they're bad. These are guys that I respect in the game, and they're saying like. The kid has skills. He really does. But he doesn't always show his skills inside the ring. It's something that all three of you champions said. You, Timmy, um, 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 Chris Algeri, and Paulie. It's all mental, man. Mm. It's all mental. He's going to have to He's gonna have to transition that into under the big lights. Mark, but he looks phenomenal. So, Mark, yes. I want to give you one last closing thought. You mentioned the, uh, the New York uh, star star power, right? The, new, the, the, the star power that some guys, uh, they bring in tickets and seats like you said uh yankee sign guys right. that may not have been good enough to be yankees but they bring in tickets and seats we see a lot right. of new york franchises do that you know we've seen the rangers you said mentioned uh, they yeah. brought in gretzky bore uh in the past you know yeah. several other stars just so Correct. people would buy tickets to sit in the seats the knicks uh brought in carmelo anthony uh and, and others again they the, just so people would buy tickets because they know the new york crowd will support and and sell out the garden and 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 put tickets in seats uh, we see the, we've seen the Jets do that with Brett Favre and and all this other stuff. The the thing that you know those franchises have that is that none of them ever win, bro. Okay, with the exception of the Yankees, that now since the Yankees stopped stopped growing homegrown talent and started signing all this this, this talent themselves, they you know they haven't won in a while either. But the Rangers have won title in 80 years. The Knicks have won title in, in 50 years. Uh, the Jets have won title in, in, in one title in, in 55 plus years. So. But the Giants, who don't do this, win titles. Is Edgar Belanga a ticket seller, big name, who's there just as a pawn to set up Canelo versus Munguia in September to make Canelo look good? Or is Edgar Belanga the New York Giants? Can he pull this off? Because the Giants have won three Super Bowls as underdogs. He's a combination of both. He's a combination of both. And don't talk about the Yankees, man. That's my team. <laughs> <laughs> That's my team, listen, too. I just listen, wish they, listen, I just wish listen, they went back to listen, play the way they used listen, to play. Listen, stop. They won 27 world champions. How little yeah, we they grew. They grew the talent homegrown, though. Yeah. But, <laughs> now they're trying to buy it all. And they can't win. No, man. We're going to win this year, man. We're going to win this year. <laughs> but, win the field. but he's a combination of both, man. And you know what? From my mouth to God's ears, um, we have no idea what's going to happen on, on nope. Uh, on May 4th. But I tell you what, people will be nervous to bet against him. And those that are going to bet against Edgar is because they're going to, listen, man, like when you finally go to that booth and you're like, I want to put X, you're going to hold it and say, does Edgar have a, a puncher's chance? And you, they're going to make him, you know, the underdog, horse by a lot. But there's going to be a lot of hesitation. There's going to be a lot of people that are going to say, Edgar has a chance. Everybody thought Charlo had a chance, right? But, you know, we're going in with a chance, and we're going in. We're going to work hard, man. That's all I can say. We're going to work hard. Well, we're, we're going to wrap this up talking to Mark Frey. You know what, Mark? What's in your favor, too? Edgar's nickname is the chosen one. So it looks like he's going to be chosen next for Canelo. But we'll see. Anything can happen, but we'll see. I guarantee you, though, that will be an exciting fight.
Listen, make sure you subscribe to our YouTube page. And remember, Pro Box TV is your boxing channel.